I got partnered up with uh, Tom Brady, who had just won his third Super Bowl. So, Crazy. You know, come on, kid, you're like, your eyes are all giant. And you're like, this is awesome. Um, welcome back to another episode of Purple Rain. We're back, and it's our first English episode. We have our first American guy on our on our show, our co coach, our new offensive coordinator, Danny Mitchell. Um, great to have you. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm I'm excited to be here with you guys, man. Hey, perfect. Um, for the audience out there, don't forget to like and subscribe. As every time, now we have to do it in English, and I, I hope everybody can follow. We'll try our best. If we have any hiccups. Sorry for that, but we'll try our best. So, to start, like every interview, we ask everybody about their football career. So, we want to ask you, like, what what was your athletic career and how did you get into coaching? Yeah, um, I, I I think I, I was born into coaching. Actually, the very first place uh, I went from the hospital when I was born was to a football field. I didn't even go home. Uh, so, my dad, <laughs> my dad has been uh, coaching high school football and baseball in San Diego for 40 years now. So, uh, so he, he is a high school football coach uh, down there and a high school baseball coach. Um, and so I grew up always in sports. I played every sport possible, um, football, baseball, basketball. Um, and throughout high school, uh, I, I, I fell in love with it really at the high school I, I, I went to. Um, I played all three sports in, in high school, football, baseball, and basketball. Um, but I, obviously I loved football. I was a quarterback um, and I always played quarterback growing up. Uh, and whether or not that's a good thing, because, you know, a lot of times you put the quarterback back there and you, it, there's one of two ways you put the quarterback back there. You put him back there, you either say, all right, that's the best athlete, or you put the quarterback <laughs> back there that, hey, you know what? That's the guy that's going to be a glorified cutoff man. And I think I was the second one. So, <laughs> um, so I was making sure I was getting the ball to the, the really good athletes. And, and so, um, you know, I think my, uh, that's kind of really my story of, of getting into football and why I love football so much because I wasn't the best player. I, and I think uh, I, I wasn't never the, the best athlete, but I was always a part of very successful teams. And so I think I learned early on that you know people use the term limitations uh, of what you do I, I think i found out what i was really good at and part of the things i was really good at is i understood the game and i understood people and i really enjoyed my biggest part and i, I think you'd ask any of my teammates uh, that i've played with whether it be in in high school or college that i was really big and i still am obviously why i think i love coaching uh, on highlighting and making the guys that i play with feel like we're the best to ever play. And I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> but you know, that was, uh, you know, I, I used to take my offensive line out every single Friday night uh, before a game uh, and we'd go out to eat and we'd get kicked out of restaurants because they eat everything. And, and, Let's go. Uh, Let's you know, go. You know, and, and the reason why I wanted them just to, because number one, I didn't want to get hit, you know, <laughs> as a quarterback. I was like, hey, I'll, I'll take you guys out to dinner. Please don't let me get sacked. And, you know, I, my in, in high school i got to play in, in multiple championships won one my senior year uh college got to play on a, a, a championship team there um, and then obviously in coaching uh, i've gotten to kind of same thing i've been a part of very very good very very good teams that have had incredible people and and, and that's what makes foot, football special so i i guess to put it all I, sorry it's a long story there kelly uh, but, it's all uh, good it's all good yeah you know, yeah, I got into coaching because of that, but really there was one major influence in my life, a guy named Tom Martinez. Uh, at 16 years old, I went and I was going all over doing these quarterback camps. And Tom Martinez is very well known for being Tom Brady's coach. Um, yeah. So I got to work alongside Coach Martinez. And so I was 16. I always remember this because uh, in America, there's all these different camps that you could go to. Mm -hmm. um, and you're trying to hone in on your skills and all that. And I wasn't learning anything. And so my grandfather had happened to play with Tom Martinez. And, and, and that was way back in the day. Uh, and so he's, he's like, hey, I have a, my buddy runs a camp. So I show up at the camp and there's only 12 of us. And of the 12, one of us is 
myself. I'm a high school kid. I'm a junior. I'm 16 years old. Uh, the quarterback at the time from USC was there. Uh, and then the other two guys that people know, two Super Bowl MVPs, Julian Edelman was there. He went to the College of San no Mateo. Um, <laughs> so Julian was actually a quarterback at that time. He was going to Kent State. And then I got partnered up with uh, Tom Brady, who had just won his third Super Bowl. So you know, come on, kid, you're like, your eyes are all giant. And you're like, this is awesome. You know, I remember playing catch with them, being super excited. And, uh, and, uh, and yeah, and, and why I actually fell in love with it wasn't because of that hype. It was actually because how Coach Martinez taught. And exactly what I told you guys the first time when we zoomed as a team, you know, the way I coach and I think every coach or teacher does is if there isn't a purpose and reason why you're doing something, you shouldn't do it. And I learned that from Coach Martinez. And so I really honed in on, on learning the details and, and I, watching him teach Tom, who arguably, without a doubt, is one of the best ever, if not the best ever now with seven Super Bowls. But at the that best. time, with three Super Bowls, and I watched this guy that is a hero of mine, taking in every word that Coach Martinez is saying, and then Coach Martinez teaching me the exact same thing and not treating us any different. And that is such a confidence booster as a young man, right? Yeah. Like you're standing next to a legend that, that, and looking at him and watching him retain what Coach Martinez is saying, and then me soaking in, and then Coach Martinez and I had a great relationship. So, um, I started flying all around the country with him doing camps. I actually got a baseball scholarship out of high school. I didn't really? play football right away. Yeah, okay. I played two years of baseball. And when I was traveling around the country with Coach Martinez, I asked him, I was like, man, I really want to coach football. Um, and uh, and so he said, a lot of guys that, that coach football at, at, at the time, because I wanted to do it at, at the high, higher level than, than high school. And, I, and he said, a lot of guys that do it at college level play college football. So I called the coaches that that recruited me in high school to play football um one of them being a guy named mark speckman who's at uc davis uh, uh very close to me i would say he's another father figure type to me his son tim is the offense coordinator for the hurricane okay. uh, uh or uh yeah the hurricane in uh in keel so okay. is that what they are they're the hurricane i think right? I, i'm not 100 percent sure yeah no. so um <laughs> yeah so there's a just a a, a tie and again a, I think what makes football to me so special, and I know we talked about it earlier off the show, is the people getting to do this with you guys, getting to do this with meeting so many, there's so many different people. And, you know, I don't think I fit the prototype look of a football, football player or coach, right? And yet I found so much success just because I love every second of it and it's go. not just the, the the game it's the people in it and that's what makes it fun and you know where i where i get my confidence as a coach from is you know i do feel like i have an understanding of the game but more importantly i feel like i, I, I it's a it's a role what's fun in coaching it's a role that you actually have zero power in. like my success as a coach your quote success any coach that has an ego about it it, they lost their, they don't understand coaching because if it's about you thinking that you're a winner as a coach, well, you're not doing anything. You're standing on the sideline. So actually what makes you a winner is the people out there. Just like I, I think what the quarterback position is about, right? Quarterback is all about that. That position is all about everyone else being, doing, being able to do their job at the best they possibly can in order for you to be successful yeah. because a quarterback, if those five guys up front can't protect you or that, or the guys, if, if, if your routes aren't right or they can't catch the ball or you're, any of that stuff doesn't marry, you're going to look at a quarterback and say, man, that guy's not any good. But he could have all the talent in the world, but he can't work without those other 10 guys. And it's such a unique sport. And Kelly, you play defense. You know if one guy on defense yeah. screws up, big play, yeah. right? At least on the offense side, you can kind of control that with the True. football. It is the ultimate team sport. Yeah, but that's yeah. the best part about the sport, I think. Yeah. Most definitely. Sorry for the long talk. I can keep No, talking. no, 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 that's great. That's great. <laughs> that is I mean, great. I mean, what we what we also told the audience uh, till now is um, that, that from the first second we, we saw you, we hear you, we, we can feel the energy you bring to a team. Thanks. It's like, 
where where is you taking this this motivation is like the 16 year old kid going to a quarterback camp fall in love with coaching and then all the energy in you i mean this is it's great it's really great oh, i mean I, I, we told them we, we told them from the uh when we when we had the the first uh playbook introductions when we told them uh, i think uh, last show or two last shows um and you you just sit down and talk football like one and a half hour or two hours into camera yeah, sorry. Without no, <laughs> no 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 without, without knowing us without knowing us and and just talk football so this is this is when you yeah. can feel the energy we, we, was there particularly i mean you said um you started you played high school football you played college yeah. football and then uh, after college football you decided was there a moment where you said no i want to be like a professional athlete or you you knew right away no i want to be a coach i knew at 16 i want to be a coach um, and i know that's really rare right i know yeah. and the more i find that you know uh <laughs> my friends say it you know my wife says it all the time you know like I know that I didn't know any better like that. I knew early on, that's what I want to do. But I know a lot of people that, that, that everyone has different paths. I know some people that are like, I don't know what I want to do. I went specifically to my university because I wanted to coach under the person that was, that, that was our head coach, Mark Speckman. And you want to know that the weirdest thing. So if you, uh, it, it was so weird getting to share my story with Chris, um, with, cause coach, coach, has a very similar story to me you know him and i went to the same university um so okay so chris went to willamette i went to willamette he he played for coach speckman's first team i played for coach speckman's last team chris's <laughs> first job was hired by coach speckman my first job was hired by coach speckman funny i lived in the same apartment chris lived in we're in the same fraternity. It's such a weird, <laughs> now I'm going to make him feel old. <laughs> I, I think he's feel old I'm going to make him feel old. This was about 18 years before me. Crazy. So, <laughs> yeah. Crazy, um, crazy. That's why I went to, to Willamette. So my senior year as a quarterback, Coach Speckman took a new job uh, in Atherton, California as the head coach of Menlo College. And he gave me a call uh, when he, it was the, the day after he took the job and he called me and, and said, Hey, I know you want to coach. Do you want to come be my quarterback coach? And I got to be down there with him and call the offense with him. So I know I was very fortunate at that time because you know, I didn't know any better, but I was 22 years old and I got to be hold the title of a, of a, of a coordinator and, and college coach uh, at a, at a college right away. And, and, you know, I think I lucked out too. When I got to Menlo, we had a transfer quarterback there that came in from western kentucky who was older than me um so really all those things had <laughs> have had fallen into place right like this guy's a stud he just played in, in, in at major division one level and this is when western kentucky was real good and uh and so i get this guy that's bigger faster stronger and and and, and was an incredible football player so if i were just to rely on like my own story of playing he wouldn't have there, there would have been no connection there but if I was able to teach to him, and we still have a great relationship to this day. His name is Matt Pelasasa. Um, he, uh, he, he became the most accurate passer uh, all time in school history there that, that, that next year. Um, and, and I don't think that was anything of my doing. It was just the ability to have conversations with each other. Because if I were to come in and try to be like a dictator type coach, this guy would have looked at me like, dude, like, you played at Willamette. I played Division One football. I had all these scholarships. Uh, no, we created a great relationship, and we go into game plans and and talk together and figure it out together. Yeah. And and I think that was the the pinnacle and the, or the really the start of of getting the opportunities I've had in, in coaching. So, yeah. yeah, I think like re I think reading the yeah. room is so important as a coach. But then, yeah. uh, what I what I think is really interesting about being a coach is. There's a lot of question marks around around your job in general because your yeah. success, um, like is most important for your job. Because if you're not successful as a coach, you probably lose your job, right? Yeah. And you might have to move to a different city. You have to move your family and all that stuff. How how was that for you? Like, or how is it for you? Like, your life is based around a job that is very much dependent on success. How is that pressure, or is there any pressure for you, or how do you deal with that? Kelly, I think you just said it, which is actually the misconception and why people fail in coaching. Okay. The moment you look at it as a job, and I, one of the greatest compliments 
I've ever gotten. I was actually talking on an interview about this before, and I didn't even know what he meant when 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 uh, I, I, my my old coach. I coached at the University of San Diego under a guy named Dale Lindsay. Uh, he was in the NFL a long time, big time legend. USD is extremely successful as a program. Okay. And he wrote in my in my recommendation because obviously I'm trying for the next job, trying for the next job, right? That was like at a young age, that's literally what I was thinking. And like you were saying, because those pressures early on were something for me. I'm like, oh, I want to stay in this. And he wrote in, in in the recommendation. He says, Danny looks at coaching not as a job but a profession. And at the time, I had no idea what that meant. I was just like, cool. I I just want the <laughs> job. That's why I asked like uh, for the recommendation. But now as I look back at it. I don't look co- at coaching as a, as a job. That's not a pressure to me. What I look at coaching as is exactly what you should look playing as, right? Why do you play football? Because it's freaking fun. You know, <laughs> why do I like coaching? Because it's freaking fun. And, and the moment it be, starts to feel like a job to where I have to show up and I put pressure on, I've never, ever seen a football team at any level. You could be playing at, at four years old in flag football and not want to win. Right. Everyone yeah. wants to win. You go out there. That's why there's a scoreboard. Yeah. But if that's all you're focused on, at some point, it's going to be a detriment. And there are ways, as we all know, right, there are ways if it's just about winning, then we can actually figure out ways for us to mask that and win. Like here's reality. Right. I, I don't know. I, you know, I think the if our ELF team, which is a totally different team right now, decide, you know what, we're not going to play in the ELF. And we're going to just play mm, in yeah, I see where you're going. or division one right now yeah. or, or any of that. Right. We could mask wins. Yeah, we could do that. You could find ways for that. But what's co- what's what's exciting about the ELF? We were just talking about that. A brand new opportunity against brand new people on a much bigger stage. And we get to do it together. Yeah. And that's what's so freaking fun. Right. The moment I got to before I ever signed to say, Hey, I'm going to be a part of the Vikings. It was actually there. There's, I think there's something about a gut feeling, right? That when I got to talk with Chris and, and meet the people, as I started meeting more and more people at the Vikings, just like I felt with, with any opportunity I've had where winning has followed with that, there was a gut feeling like, man, this is who we get to do this with. And regardless <laughs> if we win or not, we're going out to fight together. And I'm, this is the, if I'm in a back alley right now in a bad spot, you know, Vienna is really nice. There, <laughs> There's alleys, not too many bad alleys. So, you, know, <laughs> you know, if I'm in a back alley, this is the group I want to go. Yeah, with. let's this go. This is the group yeah. I want to fight with. And, and so, you know, I'm going to coach till I, till I'm, I, I it, it never feels, it, once it feels like a job, I should probably stop okay. coaching. So, yeah. Yeah, I think the good point. I jump a little bit back to the to the point when you talked about um, being a younger coach coaching um, older players. Yeah, I think as a, from the player perspective, um, and, and and I approach this since since years like this is doesn't matter how how old the coach is or if you played with him because at the Vikings or in Austria or in Europe, you often find yourself in a situation where your unit coach or your OC or your DC you played with him, right? I think Kelly. Kelly, did you play with Poots? No, but no, um, almost. almost. But so, and I think what a what a good player, what a what a player makes better is being coachable. You, you can yes. be the talented guy in the room. You can be the hardworking guy. If you're not coachable, because you look at this guy and say, "Oh, he's a he was a shitty player," or I, "I'd be a better player than he is," how how can he coach me? I think it, uh, if you if you if you if you react like that as a player, you will you will lose your job in the in the in the team. You will you you will lose your job in the unit. You always have to be coachable. Doesn't matter in sports. I think this is one of the important thing for me as a people is you always have to be coachable. Feedback, right. the greatest, feedback is the greatest thing you can get from people around you because this is the only thing you make it better. And I, I, I met, I had team colleagues in, in the other teams or something. It was like, ah, oh, this coach is shitty and uh, I play better. So like that, this will never work out. So I think that's what you described when you worked with the quarterback who is like played division one level and everything else. What, what you makes a great do is that he was coachable. Yes, that's right. And I think you just hit it right there too, right? The player, the player's coach has to be coachable, but also that's, what makes you what I, in my opinion, what makes great coaches is the coach has to be coachable. A lot of times that's missed. Right. And what does that mean? Like 
I think a great coach is one that is always trying to hone in our craft and never realizing, like I just said, I think the best coaches are the ones that realize like all this, any quote success you're going to have is actually not you. And the only way that happens is how do you keep molding to that? I got to, before I got, got here, um, a week before I flew out, I got to sit down with a guy named Norm Chow. Norm Chow is, is regarded as the best offensive coordinator ever in college football. Okay. He's really good. He's really good friends with, with Co uh, Coach Chris's family. Um, he was the offensive coordinator when USC was USC, right? When Reggie Bush, Matt Leinart was there. He coached Steve Young. He coached a ton of different – he was the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, head coach of Hawaii. And so when I – obviously, Norm also – I, I, everyone jokes with me too because obviously I'm I'm half uh, Filipino, right? He's uh, Norm Chow. He's a uh, he's Chinese and uh, and Hawaiian, you know. So I, he's a guy I've looked up to as far as that portion portion of it too. And so I was thinking, man, I'm going to meet this legend. I got to spend the day at his house with him, and the first thing that I, you could see it within him, right? This person that has it all through coaching, right? Lives in a beautiful home. Beautiful, right? He lived. He has. He 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 has created an incredible life. The first feeling I had from just shaking his hand and giving him a hug right away was, he's one of the most humble people I've ever met. You could tell he was coachable. You know what? He brought me in there to his home and was asking me, "How do you do things?" And I'm sitting there with the best of all time, and he's asking me. How are you doing things? When really my thought process was, I'm going to sit here and just be quiet and yeah. listen to everything. And again, I could realize why he's why he is who he is, because that's probably how he approached having Reggie Bush, having Matt Liner, having Steve Young, who's won multiple Super Bowls. Right. That is to me was a just a validating again, these great coaches I've ever been around, just like Coach Martinez, how he tr treats Tom Brady, how he teach, treats a little 16-year-old kid, right? The same way, the same love that he had. He, he looked at us, it, he looks at it as how how can I be, how am I going to hone in to connect with this person to make them their best version? So I think it takes it all. And that's, that's a fun part of coaching because there's, there's a psychology behind it too. Um, but the players are the ones on the field that get to do it. And that's the hardest part of coaching too, because there's times, you know, you want to be able to, to be in there and, and guide everything just to make them just like, I, I mean, I'm not a father or anything, but I would assume that's probably how a father feels with, with the son, right? You want to be able to, to put them in the best position as much as possible. But if, if they don't get there and it's just about the result, then they'll never actually grow to that. But yeah. what's cool is when you are a part of, this is what the, I think is so mm -hmm. unique, when you are a part of where you see there's, oh, there's a ton of talent in these different areas. How do you keep forcing that talent out? Not even forcing, I think it's the wrong word. How do you keep, how do you keep shining that talent and then polishing it and polishing it and yeah. say, that's what we're really good at. And then the confidence comes and it all, it all, man, I think coaching, you get, you get the best seat in a stadium. Like, <laughs> you, get, you do. I, I, you guys heard me say it on the zoom, right? Yeah. I plan on getting probably the most penalties on the team for celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> love, to, love to hear that. Love to hear that. Yeah. So I, I think you have a, a really good view of coaching and all this stuff. <clears> so <throat> you've been coaching at almost every level and you've been coaching at almost every age group, I think. And mm -hmm. so what do you think was your favorite? Do you like to coach at high school oh, let's, because you can form? Let's let's Kelly. Let's just let's just talk a little bit about your 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 stages of coaching. Where when where did you coach? Like and then yeah. and then and then going into the favorites, right? Is it yeah. okay for Gustav? Yeah. Sure. Because I, I your level of coaching just yeah. for the audience. So just I'll, I'll rewind that. So right after like right after high school, I took that the the baseball scholarship and why I took it. I'll even talk about that part of it. So why I, I went to a, a, a small NAI school, um, which is in, in San Diego and baseball was my better sport. Um, but I chose to shoot, stay in San Diego because the university I, I, I went to right away allowed me to coach. I actually had that head head co uh, my head baseball coach. So that that that, that college, uh, San Diego Christian was connected to the high school I went to. So it was right there on the okay. same campus. 
And so when I, my, myself and the head coach at the time had a chance to sit down, I asked him, hey, coach, I want to play for you guys, but do you mind if I go coach at my high school? Now in college, that's a full-time, people will say that, it's like a full-time job. So baseball is year-round there. Every sport is year-round. So by saying that, by asking that, I was putting myself in a position to say, you know what, I'm going to probably miss some of, some of baseball. And he said, yeah, you can do that. So obviously that dynamic, this is how much I loved coaching. I knew that. So I had to be able to implement with my baseball team as much as possible. So I'd make sure I would get to, I would be at workouts before everyone when we get there that way in the afternoon, at least that visual part. And again, I'm eight, I'm 18 years old at this time, so I'm still learning it. Right. But at that age, I'm thinking, I mean, I have to be, I don't want, I, again, I, I'm a part of this team. That's why I'm going to school. So, you know, I've got to be a great teammate here. So they can't view me as, oh, he's getting special treatment because he wants to coach. So yeah, I, I was coaching on my high school team. I was 18 years old. I, was, I got to call the offense for our JV team and I was coaching the quarterbacks of the varsity team, who's actually my backup quarterback when I was playing. And we went to the championship and played at, uh, at, at Falcom Stadium, uh, which is where the Chargers used to play. And so all those little things, that's where I knew I wanted to coach. And I had a great high school okay. coach. So um, from there, then like, like I was saying, that's when I decided I was traveling all over the country with, with Coach Martinez during that time too. So um, navigating both the schedule of baseball and, and doing all these coaching things. And uh, studying. And studying. Yeah, and doing studying. it all. You know, so it, it was, I, I got to learn right on like, oh, that's my passion. And in baseball yeah. season, had an absolute blast. We were really good. Uh, we, we, we had a great first year. And then the second year I, I come back, I did the exact same thing, got to coach again, but I really wanted to coach football. And okay. that's when I reached out to Coach Speck, played at Willamette, played uh, right as I graduated from Willamette, went to Menlo College. Coach Speckman was there for a year, went to the CFL uh, in the Canadian League. So I went back to Willamette, got hired by my alma mater, coached the running backs there. Then we had an All-American quarterback who's my best friend, a guy named Josh Dean. So the Austin Brook Tigers reached out to Josh. And how I got up to out to Europe was actually by fluke. Josh was, <laughs> it was in my office. I had an Xbox in my office. And so the guys would come up and play uh, Xbox all, all the time in my office. And yeah. at night, Josh is creating a Euro players. Remember the Euro players? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. And he made me one and threw my re my uh, my resume on it. So uh, Austin Brook reached out to me, obviously reaching out and, and Josh, right? They're reaching out to me to get Josh, right? I get okay, it. Okay. So Austin Brook hired me as the OC. Um, obviously, I signed Josh and I signed my best friend who uh, who I played with in high school. He was my defensive coordinator at my last place. A guy a guy named Patrick Henry, uh, Pat, Patrick Kelly. Uh, so Pat came out with me to Austin Brook. He called the defense and played linebacker. Josh Crazy. was our quarterback. And then I came out as the OC. And then after my first week at, at uh, Austin Brook, the head coach and GM, uh, Yobi, he comes over to me and says, hey, we want to make you the head coach. So this is a week before our first game. No so now way. I get nervous with my first <laughs> head coaching job. And, uh, and so I was the head coach and we went undefeated, uh, cool. won, the, won the championship there. We won the first game 51 nothing. We, we that was the most dominant team I've I've been a part of. We we averaged 49 points a game until now. and gave up six. It, I was just gonna say until now. <laughs> um so yeah, then Austin Brook to USD to the University of San Diego. I went on as an offensive assistant and learned under an incredible staff there. Um uh, the offense coordinator I got to work under, uh was a guy named Tanner Ingstrand. He's the passing game coordinator for the Detroit Lions now. Um and then from USD, they helped me get to uh, the, the last USD coach before Coach Lindsey. Uh, uh, coach Carriger was the head coach at San Jose State. So I went to San Jose State. And to be completely honest, to put it all into, into perspective here, I started doing what we were talking about earlier, Kelly. I started just chasing logos. That's the way I, I, okay. I always say it, right? I was looking, okay, once I got to San Jose, I was thinking, okay, what's my next job? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, once that happens, you start to lose it. Mm. I really, I, I mean that. So I actually decided I wanted to get out of coaching. I was going to really? move back to San Diego, okay. work for my dad's company. He has a very successful company down there. 
and said, Hey, I just want to work down there. And that's what allows him to coach, right? He doesn't do that full time. He, he coaches cause he's a path. It's a passion of his and his, his, I think I always joke. I chose my parents, right? I grew up in a, a place called Coronado, California. If you Google it, it's a pretty cool spot. It's right across it's the Island connected to downtown uh, San Diego. Okay. And when I got down to San Diego, my best friend, a guy named Joel Allen is the athletic director and head coach at the Bishop school which is a small school in La Jolla. And that's where I got to coach the quarterback you guys all saw on uh, on the huddle that Tyler Buckner, who's going to be a sophomore at Notre Dame. I will say this right now, that dude will be in the Heisman talk for the next two years. Yes, I, okay. I'm, okay. He's, <laughs> we'll clip that, and, clip that. <laughs> we will clip yeah, that, man. We clip that one, I'm telling you. So, but Bishops had about 30 guys total in their whole football program. So I was going to a very small school and my, that's where my mindset changed again. I'm like, I'm coaching cause it's fun and I'm with my best friends and it's fun. And we didn't freaking lose a game. I was there for four years. We don't lose. We won, we, we won the league every year. We, we, we got, we were absolutely dominating teams, but that was never the approach. Cause you have 30 kids and in, in San Diego, how it works too, you're not playing the same size school. So my very last game at Bishops, we, we had, this was Tyler's junior year. Uh, there are we played with a total of 14 kids the whole time now no roster was filled but 14 kids we played the largest school in san diego they showed up at the stadium in the championship and that that championship game with five buses they had 125 kids. <laughs> we show up with one it was so funny we walk up to the stadium the security guards like we're standing there we're waiting he's like and we're like are we allowed to go in and he said yeah, we're just waiting for the rest of your team. And, and I remember saying that to Tyler, and we look at each other like, this is it. So we walk in. <laughs> one, of the most, one of the most exciting games ever. Ty, Tyler scored uh, nine touchdowns that night. Like, just so, un- wow, unreal, insane. man. So, yeah, and then kind of – and now then I got to be the AD of my alma mater, and here I am with – I really mean this. I, know, I would say this if this wasn't you guys, uh, obviously getting to coach you guys, but I think – the greatest opportunity I've ever had in coaching. I've only gotten to live a week of it, but I, I know every day has been so awesome. So I cannot wait for this year with you guys. So that's kind of the journey, man. Wow. Crazy, crazy, wow. crazy journey. Wow. So what I was going to ask was just, I think I, I already know the answer, but I, I'm still going to ask, um, do you like rather coach um, like young adults or do you rather work with adults and just talk ball and, and talk about football? Or do you still like to like shape them in the way they grow up or how they view the world? How do you like what they can learn from football? Like what is what is your preferred age to work with or or if I, if I can say so? That, no, I love that you asked that because I would tell you early on, I would have said, you know, I want to coach just at the college or pro level or just mm-hmm. at the high school. I would have told you like it was an age. It actually isn't. Okay. I think it's a culture, Kelly. I, that's what I want to be a part yeah. of, I, what I love. And it's exactly why I said where I feel like I get to be with you guys now is it, it hits it exactly right. Sweet. Yeah, I think you can learn what great coaches, what great players, you're learning all the time, yeah. right? And so, you know, I obviously, what's, what's really cool about coaching here uh, what I love with coaching with Carl Stag, coaching here, coaching in, in, in Germany, coaching at the college level is, you know, everyone there is there for football, right? That's pretty cool. Like, that's what brings you. You guys yeah. love pl- – you're, you're playing football because you love playing football. Yeah. How much – that that is such a huge advantage. Um, so, absolutely, without a doubt, this is exactly where I want to be coaching. And, and like I was saying before – I'm going to enjoy every single minute of it, of it and, and as much as I can be around it all the time. I think that's hopefully the impact I can bring is the, the I appreciate you saying that here about my uh, my energy. I, I get the energy from you guys. Like there, there are times whenever you when you're around, you're, there could also be cultures where it, it it sucks your energy and it starts to feel like a job. Right. But once it becomes about like, man, there's people that want to do this and they want to get better and better at and be the best they possibly can be. How can you not want to do it? Right. Like that's it. And I see it like we're, we're out there all the time. I mean, tonight when we get out to yeah. practice, like it's going to be, I, I can't wait, man. So yeah. absolutely. This is my preferred level. Of my preferred yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So, so would you say, so, so, sorry. So you would say the secret sauce 
is uh, an, on every level of your on every station of your coaching career is to bring in the environment of everyone like first of all being together in this together going to this fight together but also have this certain level of energy and level of fun at the practices and at the games right that's exactly i think this is what what i what i what i hear out of your talking is like every station of your career you brought in your you brought in your friends as a coaches and and you create this environment to have the kids have just fun and going to a four-year undefeated season yeah, whether it's kids, adults, right? Like I was twenty, yeah. I was twenty three or twenty four when I was the head coach of Austin Brook. So, we, and as you guys know, like there, there are guys that had full families. They're yeah. thirty five, right? Like so, what I you, you said it, it going into a game, going into it's a game. It's literally in its word. Uh, it's a lot of time overlooked. It's a game. Games are supposed to be fun. You yeah. run a play, you don't run a work. Now it is hard work. There is hard like. You, especially what you do, like colliding every single play is hard. If I were to do that, if I were to probably play offensive line growing up, I would have probably been like, probably in my game for me. Right? Nah, <laughs> if fun. you're as big as Hatter, it's not that hard. <laughs> That's right. That that yeah. makes it so much easier. Exactly. If you can bench that much, I would play your line too. I would yeah, have I no know, worries. This guy, on the 225 <laughs> test, he's <laughs> 30 and he's like throwing it up. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, come like, on, man. That's you crazy. don't have to fear anybody at that size yeah. on the field. So that's pretty, pretty nice to have. Yeah, but I think that's one of the big parts of the ELF is that you get guys playing same level you are, like from right. the body statement. I mean, right. if you look at the if you look at the signings the teams are making every day, it's like, damn, that's a good football player. Like, oh, fuck, he's huge. That's going to be a lot of fun playing. I mean... Just yesterday, they announced the, retire- the returning of Karim uh, Itabali. I mean, yeah. he played for the Saints. Yeah. So if we play, if we're gonna play Hamburg, I mean, it's gonna be amazing to get snaps against the NFL veteran. Yeah. It's gonna, and that that's that's the excitement I create for me out of out of this whole league is like you you can play on a level, and I mean, I'm I'm fr- I'm 34. I play since 2003 now, and this is like wow. I'm feeling like young and hyped and motivated and this is that's what what brings the league to me so well, you just said it too right that's what makes our team special right there i think any it, that that's what makes any team special you just said hey yeah. i'm looking forward to play against the guy that played with the saints when you realize we're standing on the same field yeah, yeah. i can play with you too right yeah. and he's probably thinking the same thing he's probably thinking that's what got him to that level he's probably when he walked out to the saints he was probably thinking like, oh man, I'm pass rushing against Tom Brady. Hey, I can play with him too, right? That's what's so fun. And really, yeah, you want to get to that, that, that portion of it, why I love coaching, what gets me fired up too. Because yeah, we all have dealt with those doubts at times too, right? I, I, there were times I doubted like, can I coach with these guys? Like I looked across the sideline like, man, that guy has so much experience. Wait, I'm on the same sideline as him. I can go against you too. Let's see if you can hang. That's that's what I that's what I love, man. And that's yeah. honestly what I think we're gonna go in this league. That's what I want us to do because this is a this is an organization that is I have looked up to for a long time. You know, I've I knew the Vienna Vikings before I ever if I, if I could list out any European teams that I knew before I came to Europe, this was one of probably five on my hand that I could count Sweet. and. and the other ones were were actually in our league now because they were on Madden, <laughs> like you know, like Barcelona drag. They were on Madden, and the Rhine Fire were on Madden. You know, all these teams were on Madden two thousand five. Yeah. So I wow. knew who they were, but I knew who the Vienna Vikings were. Yeah. Everyone knew who they were. You know, <laughs> that's uh, that's yeah. what's so exciting because it's great. We always we forget that. that as as young players in Vienna. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's to so shift great. gears and talk a little bit about the ELF. Where do you see the future of that league? Man, personally, I think this league is going to blow up. And, and I think the reason why is exactly what we were talking about before is the excitement of football is is now here. I, 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 was, I was telling you guys, I think it's almost like rewinding back in time. Now, obviously, we weren't there when the NFL or football started, American football started in, in the United States, but... This is exactly how American football started. Like NFL players, when the NFL first started, they didn't make big money. They had a, they had other jobs that they were doing. They get like a hundred dollars a game, and then they'd go back home to their families or their job and, and and be a baker or whatever they were doing. 
And the popularity of the sport grew because there was, again, they were playing the sport because they loved playing the sport. That was the toughness part. You ask guys, they're now probably in their 70s and 80s when they when that, that, that started playing in the NFL. But now we see it all the time, right? And we see, oh, there's these big bucks, these big stadiums. There's a reason why this league is playing in the big stadiums. There's a reason why it's still on TV. There's a reason why 500,000 people, half a million people want to go to the game in, Mur in Munich to go watch the, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's not because, yeah, Tom Brady a little bit, but, it, 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 <laughs> little but bit Tom Brady. We don't, you don't know who Tom Brady is if you're not passionate about the sport, yeah, if you're no. not interested in the sport. No. I, no. Hey, I could tell you right now, I bet I could walk around Vienna and I could say, hey, do you guys know who Fernando Tatis is? He's the freaking best. And no one's going to be like, why do I care? Fernando Tatis, who's that? That's a shortstop <laughs> for the San Diego Padres, man. I don't like, even know who that is. <laughs> $300 million. So <laughs> he gets paid a lot more than any NFL player gets. Crazy. Why is it not popular here? Because mm -hmm. it has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with that. It's about the passion and popularity of a sport. That's what's growing here in football. Amer in, in America, actually, the sport that makes the most money is Major League Baseball, mm -hmm. without a doubt. You look at the contracts those guys get, ton of money in that sport. They ain't no baseball here. I don't, I don't see anyone swinging a bat around and throw, you know, <laughs> football's the passion. So why is ELF going to blow up? Because that passion is here. And, you know, I haven't had a chance to meet the commissioner or the leadership of the ELF, but, you know, I, I love – I'm sure he could say that he's learning through mistakes and things that he's as he, he's grown it, but you can tell he loves what he's doing. He loves what, what, what this league has the potential to do. And, and all of this stuff that will make it continue will, will, will continue because the right people are in it. The right yeah. players are in it. It is centered around you guys. Like the highlight is you guys and man, that's what's so exciting. So I, I have no doubt the ELF is, in my opinion, is going to be at some point the popularity level, and maybe I sound crazy now, but look, we can list another one I'd mark 20 years down <laughs> the road. <laughs> I can see the ELF being a very, very competitive league popularity wise <clears throat> to the NFL. And the reason why, because it's so separated from the United States and it becomes its own thing. And the reality is, I think players out here don't realize how freaking good they actually are. They, they, there's a reason why now college football is seeping in and trying to take take kids from here and, oh, we need them over on this team. Yeah. I coached a kid in Sweden, a guy named Simon Sandberg, who's he was a Pac-12 player of the year last year as a D lineman. He's going into his senior year. He'll get in the NFL. Like, yeah. that's going to happen. I think 20 years down the road, it's actually going to be a decision, do I want to go to the United States? Why don't I just play in the ELF? I can make just as much. You know, I hope like, for all the young Austrian players, that's how it's going to turn out. Absolutely agree, man. Yeah. I, I, I believe that 100%. So. Amazing. Amazing. So do you think all the money in the sports, um, especially in like when you look at these big contracts, I talked yesterday with uh, with Bo Diesel about it, um, all the money in the sports, when you look what, what, what all the NFL players take, the big quarterbacks, or like you said, the baseball players, what does it matter for paying a guy 300 million? I mean, what are you going to do with the money? Yeah, Isn't that I, don't the know, time? I, I don't I don't deal with that. <laughs> yeah. I, I would love to know that problem. I'm sure we all would. Yeah. I would take like it. I, don't I, would, I, I wouldn't mind. Like, oh, like, if you have any spare know. money. Yeah. I think we all can look at that and be like, well, I can figure out the problems with that. Yeah. But I, I, I think that's the other part. So I'll use Fernando Tatis Jr. as a, as a great example. If we don't know who he is, uh, he's he's arguably the most exciting player in, in baseball right now. Okay. Um, And again, no one I know out here really follows baseball. <laughs> but if you, what what makes for T Fernando Tatis so fun to watch is he has the exact same approach that every person I believe I know for sure in our organization that I've gotten to to see playing football here here in 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 Europe has that same approach as him. He's like a little kid out there playing. He's having a ton of fun. The guy you can tell he loves playing baseball. I bet. If he had, if they told him, hey, you have to pay 300 million to play this game, you had to pay it instead of them paying him. And if they said, this, you're, you have to do that, but you get to have your life, but you have to pay that. I bet he would say, I'd do it. 
I'll pay that. I'll pay whatever price it is to keep playing. That's the foundation. He's the best in the world at it. Tom Brady is a great example. I, just I actually think it, Tom, yeah. Tom doesn't, does, He's doesn't doing it for the money right now. No, he plays I mean, because of who he is. It is yeah. ingrained in him. It's a, who he, yeah. I mean, I got to see it firsthand. The man is a psychopath as far as <laughs> as far as detail orientation of of being so great in his craft. And everyone can watch the things that, uh, on him of how he approaches things. But for a guy that that even watching him interact with Coach Martinez and the relationship he had with Coach Martinez and the notes he would take. And there's a good special there was before one of the Super Bowls they did on him and Coach Martinez and him reading the notes that he had when he was 12 years old, preparing for the Super Bowl, right? The level didn't change for him. He was 12 taking those notes, looking at the same notes, preparing for the St. Louis Rams or the, the Philadelphia Eagles on the arguably the largest stage, no, the largest stage of this game for the Super Bowl, but he's looking at the notes that he took when he was 12. No. That's a testament to why he's great, just like the greats of, of in, any, in anything. So. Sweet. Yeah. yeah, sweet. Because that's what I wanted to talk about. I mean, Tom Brady, when I Googled uh, last year's best uh, top-rated quarterbacks from the money side, Tom Brady coming in on 15th, right? Yeah. So he's on 15th place when it comes to the earning, and number one, was uh, Mahomes, okay, great quarterback. And then great. you have Dak Prescott, number two, like Sucks. getting the most money as, as a quarterback. And Overrated. then Deshaun Watson. And then Deshaun Watson on coming in on third, getting the third most amount of money playing a quarterback. But on my opinion, that is nothing compared to, to a player level of a Tom Brady. Or, or So I think all the big money in these sports, that's why I also love this, 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 this part which you said, the European League of Football, I don't think it's necessary to 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 put um, to grow that fast. Um, I think you have to grow solid, because that's what what the problem in European football was. Some teams blow up, blow up the money, and then got bankrupt. Yeah, and I think that this is some of the success of this league will be growing tremendously, growing every year, every year, but not growing like that fast, right? Yeah, and um, I, I also don't. I'm I'm not a big fan of all this money in the sports right now because these contracts are nah. This contracts Why? are huge and dumb. Uh, what is it? What? what is it? What is a 22 year old soccer player making with 300 million dollars? He, he could I lose mean, his job in the next week oh, if he tears his ACL for him, I'm and then sorry he's for done. Him. He I don't know. I think it's fair. I think you should value pro sports that much. Yeah, of course. But I mean, look at skiing. Why skiing is a hell of a sport. I mean, they're losing their bodies in, in one season, two season. They don't earn a, a, a piece of that what like, they don't you earn as, as a many soccer views. player. Yeah, that's the fact. That's the fact. You earn that much money because you attract viewers. Yes, that's you right. You sell tickets. You yes. sell sponsorships. You yes. sell boots, jerseys. You sell jerseys. Yeah, but I mean, from the sport perspective, right, there are so much freaking athletes out there don't earn a single piece of that amount of money, like swimming or skiing. I don't know. Chose I mean, I'm not a sport. fan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> BGJ, fighters. I, mean, I don't know. I don't that know. What the, that what the boxing doing on the world-class level. I mean, just box for five rounds, not really intense, and then get the 200 million for the show. I mean, come what on. What do you mean? <laughs> come on. Yeah, uh, come I, on. I'll tell you what. I think yeah, that that is such a, a unique argument in all, in all of it, right? Because there is the business side to, to athletics. And of course. Sport, right? Of course. And yeah, I, I you can only speak obviously from my own perspective. Like each one of us, you know, I think something that my parents ingrained in me early on, and I, I you you talked about you seeing these contracts that these quarterbacks in the NFL are making. Um, yeah, something my parents ingrained in me early on was choose to be do things that make you happy, and regardless about money. And I get everyone has different living situations, right? I know I grew up in a, in a situation with my family where I had the ability to be in a position to say it, it wasn't about money. It was about being in, it, it was about doing what makes you happy. And that, that to me is really resonated and shown with these NFL athletes. And, and why do I say that? Because these top tier quarterbacks that you just listed, Patrick Mahomes, Deshaun Watson, uh, uh, Russell Wilson. You can just list them off. These guys that we know, I love watching mic'd up. Do you guys ever watch those mic'd yeah, up yeah. things? What I love is you can tell 
those guys are having so much fun playing the game they play. They're not, it, yeah, they're, they're stresses of the game, they're stress, but they're, they aren't doing it for the money. Sure, that's part of the motivation. I have, in my personal opinion, I have no issues with guys. If you're, if you're give them as much as they possibly can. That that's awesome because you know what? That means that that's just feeding into their passion. But I actually don't think they're just doing it for the money. Tom Brady yeah. is a great example. He's not doing it just for the money. Now, the more the money comes, obviously that can change things. But you know, th I do believe that the popularity, the like we could go on that our, that 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 tangent as long as we want the popularity of the sport, the marketing, the TV deals. There's money that's going to follow it, which is really cool about the ELF because I think that that portion is going to be built, but that's not the foundation. Just like the, that portion of these NFL athletes and these major these major athletes in every sport is built on that, but that's not why they do it. Like Cristiano yeah. Ronaldo, I love watching like videos about him and seeing who he is obviously i don't know who he is like as a person but you can tell the guy worth billions but man i don't think you can take a soccer ball out of his uh, off of his feet right you can't use your hands but <laughs> you know <laughs> um, yeah I, I think there's such a weird unique psychology to that and uh yeah man I, it's going to follow it will follow uh, in, in my my belief uh, so let us we are talking and talking and talking and talking um let us just talk about uh, the ELF roster of the Vikings. Are you happy with the signings till now? Oh yeah, yeah. I, the only one, really, I, I know it sounds selfish and cliche in itself, but uh, only uh, the only thing I'm really happy about is our team. I, I don't really care about these other teams. And, and <laughs> I see cool. what that's why I asked you about the signings. About yeah, the Vikings. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited what we got, and, uh, and really, you know, I think we have obviously a ton of talent, but the ta the, the people we've signed. And the people we have that are, every single this roster is filled with great dudes. I haven't yes. met one person on this team that's that yes. isn't playing because they just they love playing. And you know, even our big time, you know, the big names that we've gotten, you know, the guys that that yeah, our quarterback. I can't wait till this league gets yeah. beaten, man. Yes. Yeah. Weston Carr, when they get to see him, Weston played last year and played at Penn State. Man, this league is going to get to meet some people. Xavier is, yeah. He, he, I'm just talking the American parts and and Blake Nelson, these guys, and then the European players that are outside of our organization, which the organization already, the guys we have with you, and, and with you two, and and you could keep going with every single guy in this yeah. organization. It's a whole man. We're this is special. I know it's special. How, you can't put a finger on it. Uh, how were how were the signing processes of all the like looking for a quarterback or looking for these four or five American spots? How 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 was you involved in the signing processes? Like, are there hours and hours of watching movies and hours and hours of watching films and then then talking to the guys? And what does it take for you to sign a quarterback? Yeah, uh, Chris kind of involved me in that. Um, so with the quarterback portion, at least of it, I got to meet some of them, uh, and, and interview them and, um, watch all their films. That's one of the coolest things is, you know, every guy that you're evaluating and looking at is a really good player. And every guy that you, you narrow down to is a really good player and a really good person. Um, so yeah. narrowing that down, um, that, I think that's the hardest part of, of Chris's job as the, the head coach, he ultimately makes that decision and, you know, I think that's what makes him such a great coach, man. He's made okay. the right decision on people and okay. the guys we side. And, and I'll tell you, I, I was only really involved a lot in that quarterback position. And the guys we narrowed down, they're all great dudes. I yeah. think every single one of them would have been a really good fit. I, I'll tell you what makes Jackson special is after the first two minutes of talking to him, the same – that same fire, that same passion, that same excitement. He approaches that position in a way, in my opinion, that makes that position special. Like the Tom Brady. A lot of people, Tom Brady, why is he so good? He, what? He's not. He's not the fastest. He doesn't have the best arm strength. He, arguably, there's guys that are actually probably smarter than him. He's an incredible teammate. Yeah. I, no one knows what Jackson brings. You guys are going to feel it when he gets <laughs> it. 
it can't will wait. be can't his wait. offense. And yeah. you guys, and he's going to find ways to make you shine. And you'll see, you can watch his, his, his highlight on his highlight. There's a clip of his highlight on YouTube of him at, I think it's at halftime or something or pregame. Bro, I'm just juiced listening to the dude. I'm like, <laughs> let's freaking go. Let's I'm, go. Be I'm, I'm like, my, my whole thing is, I'm, all right, I can't, I, just, I can't hurt him. I can't jump on his back. You know, I don't want to you guys. So, Great. yeah, we've got Great. a good group of dudes, man. Yeah, and awesome. I'm so excited awesome. to watch you guys just show off. Show yeah. off to Europe who you are. So, yeah. Great. I mean, yeah, the next weeks will bring a lot of installments. Uh, we started uh, last week. We um, we are done with testing. We are now into uh, talking and, and, and teaching football. I miss yeah. this so much. We had a long, long off season. Yeah. Um, we have now uh, a short, a short, longer, just for the viewers, longer warm up sessions. And then we are right into install uh, only the Austrian guys because we are not allowed to train with the European mm -hmm. guys or with the with the American guys. This is a special deal of the league to to give every team the same chance. Um, teams with bigger money can probably bring in the imports like way earlier and can train uh, with the imports. So this rule that we are not allowed to train and uh, practice with the imports and with the European player, just to get every team the same opportunity to have the same uh, status of preparation. So I yeah. think it's a good rule. I don't know what Christoph is telling is thinking about that. Yeah, I think it's um, okay. Yeah. And right now we have then indie time, only helmets only. And yeah, it's great install. So this is what the next three to four weeks will look, right? And then finally, finally, the big thing is the first weekend of May, uh, when we get all the team together, uh, pff, yeah. this will be this will be huge. It's going to be interesting to meet all all the different guys. But as coach said, the Vikings did a really good job in the past of bringing good people in. And for me, as a teammate, that's the most important. I mean, it's great to have the best player on your team, but if he he's an asshole, or he, if like if he's not nice to be around. It, it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, it does matter, but it kind of doesn't. And for our team, we're really lucky, I think, to have a great guys on our team, great teammates, and I, I, I'd love to spend time with anybody. So that's really big for me and really important to me as a player. Yeah, Kelly, you, you said it, and that's it. it Hayer, you just said it too. Like, our, our foundation, our homegrown foundation, that's what is our culture. Right. So in my opinion, even as the outside coach coming in, right, the, the what imports or people, the other guys that come into the team, they're only here to add to that. But the foundation is already here. And I felt it even that first practice we had this week. And I know that's where I'm what regardless if we did have whoever's bring we're bringing in whoever's coming into this this organization the foundation's built and it's built off of you guys that's what makes it special that's where the excitement comes right that's the that is what i think this league is going to get a chance to see who the vikings really are it starts with people growing up in this academy when i asked you chris i was like christoph you said you're like I've been part of the Vikings forever. Yeah. Hater, you've been here since what, 2013. It, like guys in this organization have a chance to show all of Europe who they are. And you know what? These at other additions, you feel it. There's nothing you, you can't, I can't put a finger on it. But once you get here, you you feel and not even, it was before you get here, you feel like, man, I can't wait to show who the Vikings are because I'm a Viking too. <laughs> Yeah. You know, that's a let's go. That's what we, we're gonna get to do on this. Well, this is close. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's high. amazing. Yeah, we have two more uh, things we always do in the show. We do like, yeah, we're a little bit over an hour. I mean, we can talk. Yeah, for sorry, hours. guys. We can talk for no, years. it's perfect. no problem. We have we have months left. We have months left. It's just the loss of our audience because we three can talk the next. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I, know. Well, I feel like great. we could talk forever. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, Sunday the Austrian Football League is starting um dragons against uh ducks it will be interesting kellner uh, christoph and me we will be there kellner Maybe you want to join <laughs> kellner, sorry christoph and kelly christoph <laughs> kelly and me we will be there kellner uh we will go to the dragons game and we will have the chance to to talk more about the uh, ball but we have two categories left first of all we have a thesis uh we every time we bring in some some yeah 
how to explain a thesis in, in English. It's just a wild um, thoughts and we just a make, wild thought yeah, yeah, yeah. in we Christos just argue mind. to make it sense or like I do mostly. And I just try to make sense and then Hyder tells me I'm 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 totally off and then we'll we'll, we'll leave with that. <laughs> no, what I wanted to talk about, we had that already on our show when I said bad players make good co- can be good coaches in their in their future. And I, I'm really, really interested in what you're gonna say about that. Cause what I what I think is that if you're a bad player and you have to spend a lot of a lot of um time to figure out how you do things on the field how to how to be successful i think the thinking process of that um gives you a chance to be a good coach because you can teach that process to other people and i think that can make you a good coach but then on the other hand all the other guys said no that's not true because you you kind of have to be a good player too to understand the game and stuff so i'm interested what do you say about that well, I think I'm a great testament of a bad player being a good coach. So, let's go. <laughs> yeah, so that makes you know, me right. And that's yeah. all I wanted no, to hear. But I think, uh, you know, I think it's different for every guy. You know, I think the best coaches, the best coaches are the ones like we were saying at the beginning that are coachable and are very, in my opinion, humble in that, that way. And humble means, I think a lot of times when we think of humble, that, that word means like, oh, I'm, I'm reserved, at least how I think of it, right? Mm-hmm. I'm reserved. I, I don't take credit. No, humble is understanding that you're pretty good at something, but you can always be better. And I'll give a great example of a great coach that also was a phenomenal player. A guy named Shane Walton. I got to coach with him. He's one of my best friends back home as well. I have a lot of close friends, obviously. Shane was a, an All-American. He's the head coach at Bishops now where I was. He was our D coordinator there. He was an alum there. But he went and he's an All-American at Notre Dame. Okay. Um, there are two There are two guys at Notre Dame that there are uh, memorabilia up at the stadium of. One of them is Rudy. Rudy Rudiger, who you guys probably have seen that movie before uh, about a walk on that that yep. played, and like there's a movie called Rudy about Notre Dame. The other yeah. one is Shane Walton. Shane Walton <laughs> was a walk on. He walked on at uh, at Notre Dame, became an All American, played for the 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 Rams uh, with, uh, with the Colts, the Steelers. Um, absolutely incredible football player. Why he's also great friend of mine and also a a more just the person i look up to is you would actually have zero idea who shane is i can walk over to if i go to notre dame and you say shane walton they're gonna look at that people are asking autographs of him and like oh that's shane walton you never know the way he coaches the way he approaches things uh, is 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 so special so again he's a humble dude that to me is what, so that's a great player who's a great coach. There's also guys I think that are very similar to me. That are, <laughs> no, I wasn't very good, so I had to learn all the different details. I think that's why I attached to Coach Martinez so well, and, and it, it, I think that helped me in the coaching. I actually think that's why Tom Brady is Tom Brady. You know, I think that's overlooked too. We all look at Tom Brady of who he is now, like, oh, seven Super Bowl, he's so great. The dude was picked in the sixth round. He wasn't a good player on, on as far as yeah. if you compare it to other NFL his athletes. Draft, his draft pictures and his draft videos are All those just, things, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he is a, a culmination of what it takes to be a great coach and got to keep doing it as a player. So we all can talk about Tom Brady now. <laughs> Would we have these conversations about Tom Brady when he was a backup quarterback at Michigan and – then all of a sudden got a chance with the, the Patriots because Drew Bledsoe went down. We don't know who he is. He, yeah. he, he has that same approach. So I think it's a mindset, man. I really yeah. do. I think it's something about that and exact reason. So, yeah, Christoph, that's always going to be a conversation. <laughs> I think it comes with that humility part. And, yeah. and, and there's some Probably. great examples on both sides. Amazing. Amazing. Do you think Tom Brady could be a good – coach like quarterback coach or or i think he could be a great mental coach what would you see about him i mean he has his tb12 academy i guess right yeah yeah um i think he can be a great mental coach like just yeah yeah i would assume he'd be very good just like i think like peyton manning be very good i think all those guys that are like that that right now we look at them as great and and we see them in this now of 
being who they've become, but we don't look at the journey it took them to become that, yeah. right? I, I think there's times the talent overshadows the person. I actually, you know, a guy that, that, and this is always the argument, right? Like Michael Jordan, LeBron James in basketball. <laughs> Those guys, both of them, arguably extremely talented, as anyone could say, right? Most talented yep. players in the sport. Definitely. Michael Jordan's story of him being cut from his own high school basketball team to being the greatest of all time. LeBron James, another great story. I really, regardless of what people think of who LeBron is, I love the way he approaches how he plays. He is phenomenally talented. He yeah. always has been. But the guy you can tell is a competitor. And, and that, I think, is what it takes. And so whether you're a phenomenal coach, phenom Kobe Bryant, these guys that are, that are elite as athletes could also probably be elite as coaches in their approach. Yeah. So, yeah. Sweet. Great talk, great talk. I appreciate you guys, man. I'm so sorry for keeping you on so no, long. No, no, no. I think oh, it was that's a really amazing. good episode. That's amazing. That's amazing. We yeah. do this. We do this also for us, not also for the, yeah. <laughs> the audience. So, Christoph and me, we just love talking. So, yeah, yeah. same thing. Well, we, love, love we love talking guys, about man. ball. Yeah, so that's why we we just thought about hey, let's make a podcast. Then we can talk and talk and talk and film us. So it's a little... <laughs> yeah, I love it. yeah. yeah. Unfortunately for the audience too, we have this little coronavirus going on so that's why we have to make it uh online this time so hopefully um we back out here soon and um, there's one more category uh we do it's a little bit of fun category um and uh i just ask you some random questions not about football just it's random rapid questions. fire and it's, it's, rapid, it's fire. rapid fire the category is known as uh know your viking better more yeah, deeper. I love it. And uh, <laughs> so that's why. <laughs> but it's, it's even it's worse because it's that bad of an English, <laughs> and now we have to do it in English. It sucks, but it's okay. <laughs> uh, we did it with Chris in English too, but Chris is such a long time in Austria now, so he knows some stuff. But yeah, we will we will adapt it a little bit, okay? Uh, um, so we start and uh, just ask questions. So, what is in on your mind the best Disney film ever? Aladdin, easily. I can sing every single song. Wow. In it. You can? Uh, 100%. Yeah, that's my hidden talent. I'll tell you, that's my hidden talent. My wife love will love karaoke. You. you love karaoke? <laughs> yeah. Man, you know, oh, you I and work... Hyder have to link up. And go I play. work for a Korean company for LG. You know that? Long, I didn't know that. Long I work for LG Electronics. And I visited Korea like four or five times, work-related. I was on make vacation there. I'm loving karaoke. I will I, honestly. I think I'm one of the best karaoke singers in the world. <laughs> you and I, bro. I'm telling you. Hey. And, and Koreans, Koreans already Weird confirmed flakes. that. Confirmed that. that. So uh, I know the best karaoke locals uh, in, in Indiana. I, I am not. I. I. Hey, being a football coach is actually not my dream job. It's to be a boy <laughs> band member. That's what I want. Really? To I'm still wow. waiting. That's when One amazing. Direction hey. gets back together, they're going to give me a call. I'm hoping so. But yeah. Harry Styles. Yeah, that might be the call. Kickstarter to that career. Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay, Aladdin, nice. Um, you're a Star Wars fan? A Star Wars fan? Yeah. A uh, little bit. I mean, I, I was more of a was on the other side of Lord of the Rings and all yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Which is the best Lord of the Ring movie? Oh man! I Did you would read the book too? Two Towers, the second one that second, comes yeah? out, wow. because Gollum shows up in it. Okay. <laughs> I like him. Okay, so. okay. Did you read the books too? No, I can't read. That's my problem. So okay. <laughs> no. okay. that's good. No, I that's just good. have a hard time like sitting down and reading them. Okay, uh, so obviously we talked about it. What is your favorite karaoke song? Oh, dude, I have to do it. Uptown Funk is my go-to with oh, Bruno Mars. Are you rocking it? I think you I can get the room rock, rock in there. Oh, but Heider, I think it, you and I will probably find a duet that we can do that is, oh, yeah. we might be oh. we might be taking over Austria. Ain't, ain't, ain't no mountain high enough or something. Oh, we like, could get it up there. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Kelly, what was your favorite song? I forgot it. My favorite song? Poof. Now you put me on the spot. Of course I do. Um, I would say, ah... Uh, no, I don't know the name. <laughs> <laughs> that huge of a karaoke fan. I, I'm just planking yeah. right now. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Next question. McDonald's or Burger King? Oh, 
Did you have it? McDonald's, t- easy. The fries. Really? Yeah, I love the fries at McDonald's. That's my go-to. Burger King has the better burgers, but yeah. yeah, I love the fries. Did you already check out the McDonald's in Vienna? I haven't here, no. I love okay. McDonald's in Europe a lot better than America. Mm-hmm. It's totally different. It is different, Food's right? totally different. Oh. Yeah, because you have over there, I mean, you have other 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 lovers. I mean, you have Shake Shack and how old yeah. the... And well, all the all the burger in names. and out California. In and in and out burgers. It, oh, t- oh, I love man. in and out. Yeah, I me love too. I love that shit. <laughs> I could let eat me, that every let day. Me, let me pitch a business project. <laughs> we are making <laughs> we are making an in and out burger bar with karaoke. Bro, Ooh. but I mean Ooh. you and I are running. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do this. After the football season. Okay, nice, nice. Um, what are some more questions? So yeah, then you tried already schnitzel, right? I love schnitzel. Yeah. You love schnitzel? <laughs> love it. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So, here, so I like it here. Burger. It's with pork. It's pork here. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love it. I mean, they all read vanilla with lamp, right? Is it lamp? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's not yeah. lamp. It's carp. Not. It's carp. Was this carp? <laughs> <laughs> veal. That's what I had it with. Yeah. It was with veal, not with pork. It was with veal. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what I had it here. That's a different one. Yeah. Yeah. But mostly you get porks. Mostly you yeah. get pork. That's what I meant. It's the amazing. one here yeah. was with veal. It was really good. Yeah. Okay. We will bring you to the to the favorite O line spot where you get like this kind of a schnitzel. Let's this, go. Yeah. Um, you you like pineapples on a pizza? No, I'm not a pineapple on Thank pizza you. guy. But Thank I'll, you. I, I'll eat it. You have There's to talk nothing to Chris. I won't eat. Yeah, I won't talk to Chris. I love to hear that. Yeah, um, I, I mean, really? I'll take a Hawaiian pizza if it's in front of me. I'll eat it all. It's not my first choice. <laughs> okay. So. All right. In the cinema, popcorn or nachos? Nachos. Nachos. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. You're a, fr- you're a fan of the sweet popcorn stuff? Uh, ah, like kettle corn? Yeah. I mean, I'll eat. Dang. So I, my, my, one of my buddies, that guy Joel I was telling you about, he said the best date spot to take me is AMPM, which is like a gas station uh, place because okay. I'll eat seriously anything there's nothing i won't eat <laughs> so yeah i'll eat it i like it okay we will try some snails on you uh, oh escargot you tried it already had it. yeah it tastes like really uh, had it it tastes like uh like a, a loogie right? like a like snot it tastes like snot oh, i cannot yeah, eat snails yeah, yeah i don't know that doesn't sound appetizing i'd eat the whole thing though <laughs> <laughs> shit okay what's your favorite 90 gadget Oh, 90s gadget. That's good. Um, bro, I had Pokemon cards. Let's go. Yeah, I had those. Yeah. Nice. I should have kept them because they're worth like, so much. Like last yeah. year's hype was huge. Bro. My, With the Pokemon my, Go? Uh, yeah. So, no, Pokemon cards. They were selling Pokemon cards yeah. last year. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I had like. You're too old for that, Hada. Yeah, I had I had basketball <laughs> I had basketball cards. There was like in my in my youth in Vienna, there was everyone is collecting basketball cards. Oh like yeah, in this two thousand basketball was so huge in, in in Europe too. NBA, Michael Jordan area, um, basketball was huge. So everyone was collecting those basketball cards, and then the kids started with Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, I have all I the baseball cards. Those were big back mm. back uh, when I was a kid too. I still have my my binders of baseball cards. And they are like also freaking expensive. Some some of them right now, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, can you get make some serious stuff. money. Yeah. Uh, okay, Backstreet Boys or in sync? <sighs> the hardest argument. Backstreet Boys. Okay, easy. Yeah, right? What's your favorite Backstreet Boys song? You know the cliche is everyone says I want it that way, but I go to <laughs> this is how well I know the Backstreet Boys guys. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so song number eight, Millennium album. The one. You guys gotta check it out. It's a great one. I'll be the one. Yeah, it's a good one. I'll tell you. Let's go. You're an expert. Yeah, you you really are. Um, I am. This question I don't ask. Dog or cat? Dog or cats? I mean, you have a dog, right? I got a dog. So you're yeah, a dog, I'm a dog guy. guy. Yeah. I'm a dog guy. He's a big white German Shepherd. He'll be out here uh, in a month or so. So awesome. You guys will get to meet awesome. him. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Last question. Best Super Bowl halftime show ever. Oh no! Let me let me answer that for you. Bruno what? Mars is your Bruno you, Mars you is your it. Bruno no Mars way. is your favorite show. Of course, man. Bruno well, Mars. You think Bruno Mars was, was better yes. than the last one? Definitely. Definitely. Yes. I love the last one. I love the last one. I right? It was good. Are off it was totally. It was off. awesome. Last one was awesome, but you can't beat Bruno, man. No. When he was no, in San Francisco, like, ah, that Snoop guy and Dre and yeah. Eminem. 
Colorado. That guy is quick. living. Hi there. He's living our life. Bruno, is living, <laughs> that's our next yeah. stage. After after you're done coaching, after I'm done, or excuse me, you're done playing, I'm done coaching. We're the next, but we're the next big thing in in music. Okay. Okay. I got you. We will do that. That was my last question. It was hilarious. Uh, thanks for joining the show. Um, Thank you guys. Yeah. This was uh, the Purple Rain episode 11, I guess. 12? 12? Oh my God. I don't know. Whatever. Kelly, help me out. Whatever. Whatever. And, it was a good episode. That's it was a good episode. It was a lot of football talking. Um, if you have questions for Coach Mitch, just just uh, put it into the chat. It was Lowe's chat. And um, we are out, right? Yes. Kelly, you have some more to say? No. Thanks for, no? for being with us today. And thanks for watching and listening and subscribing. And see you in the next episode. Peace. Yeah. Coach, Coach, you have something to say for the fans? Uh, thank you guys. You guys are not gonna, you're not gonna regret coming to a Vikings game. It's gonna be a ton of fun. So we want you all out there. Then follow the Vikings on all the social medias too. You can follow us too. So <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Peace. All right, guys. Love you guys, man. I'll see you tonight.